Hi, welcome to A Grey Barn Rising. I'm reading the poems this evening of the Greek poet Miltos Saktoris. He lived from 1919 to 2005. He's a fascinating poet. I came to his work later than some of the other Greek poets, in part because uh, his work had not been readily available in English translation. Uh, I want to read from a couple different selections of his work uh, this evening. He's known as, as one of the Greek post-war poets, and that's the group of poets who uh, lived, uh, endured the uh, Greek-Albanian War, the Italian and uh, German occupation of Greece during World War II, uh, the Greek Civil War. Uh, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of struggle in the Greek psyche in a historical and political uh, uh, moment, and uh, his poems reflect that, uh, even indirectly. Um, so I'm going to begin with uh, reading a few of his poems for you. This is called, uh, I want to read first from this uh, lovely book from Archipelago uh, Press, translated by Karen Emmerich, and this is uh, just called Poems 1945 to 1971. The Poet's Head. I cut off my head, I put it on a plate, and took it to my doctor. There's nothing wrong, he said. It's just overheated. Throw it in the river, and we'll see. I threw it in the river with the frogs, and it raised a dreadful racket. It started shrieking and howling, all kinds of strange songs. I picked it up and put it back on my neck and roamed the streets in a rage with a poet's green hexagonometric The Collector. I collect rocks, stamps, the caps of medicine bottles, broken glass, corpses from the sky, flowers, and everything good that in this fierce world is in danger. High up, I watch the eagle vanishing like a kite. I touch electric wires without fear. They don't touch me. The sun collects my days, laughing. Only my soul whispers in my ear, saying, it grew dark. You grew dark. Why? Aren't you scared? <laughs> the closing is just so uh, beautifully bizarre. Uh, that poem. That's The Collector. Those are a couple of poems from the Karen Emmerich translation. I want to read a few poems now from the, the first uh, gathering of Saktoris' work that I came to. I was living in Albany, New York at the time. I came to this book in the fall, I believe it was, of 1987. Uh, still remember being in Boulevard Books on Central Avenue and discovering this book. And I had known a lot of Greek poets at the time, and, and this was a poet uh, who was new to me, and I was so excited to, to come to his work. This is a translation by Kyman Fryer, a uh, very well-known translator of Greek poetry. This poem is called The Gold. One day we shall stop like a sky-blue coach in the midst of gold. We shall not count the black horses. We shall have nothing to add. We shall no longer have anything to share. Holding a stick, we shall pass through the black burning hole of the sun. The closing of that, I think, is almost uh, emblematic of uh, Sartorius's work that we shall pass through the black burning hole of the sun. The, um, the ability to pass through the black burning hole of the sun for Sartorius as a poet uh, has really been surrealism. He came to uh, some of the uh, Greek surrealists at a time in, uh, when they were uh, beginning to gain popularity. Poets like Odysseus, Elitus, Nikos Gatsos, Nikos Enganopoulos, and that really changed how he wrote poetry. In fact, he wrote his um, translator, Kyman Fryer, 
uh, at one point, and he said, Surrealism freed me from many things. And I've certainly found that in my own life, and I, I see it in uh, Sartoris' work, that Surrealism has granted him the capability to access his unconscious and to bring over from the, un the unconscious mind something of deep value into the conscious mind. And I think for him that's that passing back and forth through the black burning hole of the sun. So I wanted to share that poem with you, and I think that's the alchemical sense of, in many ways, in this poem entitled The Gold, that alchemical sense of, uh, uh, at least indirectly in this poem, uh, transmuting lead into gold. This is called Moments, and this poem is in several short sections, and I'm just going to pause between sections. The lover, a sick fish at any moment now, will fall into the sky. I never expected a hell with so much light turning the corner to confront the black red. Locked up at night in cages of rain, I am slowly, slowly killed by birds. And in the morning, if the birds sent me by God are black again, I shall dye them green yellow, red, but one day the everlasting clouds will come. Cypress tree, red skin of the soul. A sweet hand broken, cast on stones, on the street, on chaos. Good night. I love that little closing section of all of these small sections and then the smallest of those, the shortest of those is simply good night. And the multiplicity of good and night, uh, it's, it's good night, but it's also a good night. Um, I think I will read two more poems. This is called Life. Strange little impressionistic poem. Night in a pharmacy, a kneeling horse eats the floorboards. A girl with a strange green burn is being healed, while the ghost in despair weeps in the corner. You hear the word, uh, the color green in there. Another uh, very noteworthy aspect of Sartoris's poems is that it's populated by a multiplicity of colors. Green, reds, blues, blacks. You've heard a lot of those already, <clears throat> excuse me, already just in this, this brief reading. And I'll close with uh, this poem, The Money. I want to mention that um, <clears throat> Sartoris lived kind of a, a circumscribed life, a very Kafka-esque experience uh, in his world, in which he, uh, well, he actually had uh, taken uh, many classes in law, had completed his studies in law, but then had decided not to take his final exams. Uh, this was after his father, who was a lawyer, uh, had died. And Sartoris took a, a small apartment, lived uh, in Athens on a very uh, meager uh, amount of money, uh, a very Spartan existence. Lived in a, a, an apartment with a bed in one corner. He had a kitchen the size of a closet. And he would go out and basically lived. His whole world was his neighborhood. There was a cafe or two he would frequent. He would go to the same butcher every week. He would visit the same stores. And his whole life became this internal life uh, of, in many ways, surrealism as a way, of an imaginative life in which the outer world was uh, more far removed for him. Um, I mention this in this poem because I think there's a parable quality to this poem. And I'm also thinking about Kafka and some of his parables. So there, there are some parallels between um, uh, Franz Kafka and uh, uh, Milton Sartoris. This is called The Money, and this is dedicated to Tatiana Miliaks. 
The gypsy woman says, I read money in your sleep. You have a crowded life filled with snow, but I do not know when you will slide on. The shepherd says, when you do not love the stars, my sheep will hate you, and I shall give you that half of the moon which vomits flame from the side of rage. Death says, the money is mine. The moon also is mine. The snow and the sheep are mine, and the red flame and the gypsy woman and the shepherd. It's entitled The Money. I also think it connects to his, uh, Soctoris's, um choice to uh, live a, a full interior life uh, and not pursue uh, money and some of the, uh, the outer things in life. So uh, those are a few poems of the Greek poet Milton Soctoris. I want to mention, uh, although I did not read from this particular volume, I want to mention the, the great Greek magazine, The Charioteer. Uh, this magazine, I have issues from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and they often will feature a particular poet, a massive book, you know, a couple hundred pages of, of, of a journal. And this particular issue is the poems of Miltos Sactoris. And although I didn't read anything from uh, this uh, particular issue of the magazine, I would encourage you to perhaps seek it out. There's translations of his poems, even a couple of essays about his work, and that's another fine resource for Milton Sartoris, and of course for Greek poetry. There are other issues of the charioteer that are dedicated to Giannis Ritsos and uh, various other Greek poets. So I read this evening again from Karen Emmerich's uh, translation from Archipelago Books. Uh, the poems of uh, Miltos Sartoris, 1945 to 1971, and also from the first book of his, I came to uh, the selected poems translated by Kyman Fryer. Thank you so much for joining uh, Bootsy and me for another episode of A Gray Barn Rising.